Heal the path. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello there, Facebook family and friends. Abel Damina is my name and I'm excited to welcome you to the broadcast today. I'm excited every time we're able to bring you the word of God over and over through the course of the day because the whole essence for ministry is to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. In the book of Ephesians chapter 4, he that descended, the see that ascended. And when he ascended, he gave gifts to men for the perfecting of the saints. That's the whole essence for this broadcast every day here on Facebook. 12 noon, GMT plus 1 and 10 p.m. GMT plus 1. The whole essence is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. That's the whole of the mandate given to the church. When Jesus rose from the dead, he said, go into all the world and make disciples. I believe God that disciples are being raised, ministers are being equipped through this broadcast every day. Do me a favor today. Invite a friend, invite a loved one. Help us spread the news. Let's cover the blue marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. And I'm excited that every day here on this platform, the word is going forth. Nations are being affected. Continents are being impacted. Lives are being turned around into effectiveness in the advancement of the message of Christ. And a whole army is being raised all over the whole globe. And I'm excited you're one in that number. Today, do me a favor. Invite some people aggressively. Tag some people. Bring some people onto this platform. Let's get the word of God around. I want you to invite somebody. Fasten your seatbelts. Get your notebook and your paper as the word begins to come. Just before we get into service, if you're watching the broadcast and you don't have a church where you attend, it's so important. I want to encourage you to ensure before the broadcast is over today, you shoot a mail to me. We'll advise you about how to connect to one of our campuses in your area and how you can be a part of a local assembly. God wants you to belong to a local assembly. Number one, so you're spiritually built up under supervision. Number two, so you can be accountable for your spiritual life. Number three, so you join other believers to reach out to more people and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And number four, so you can serve the body of Christ with the gift and callings of God upon your life. So if you do not have a Christ-centered ministry, a church where the message of Christ is preached, you can hook up with any of our campuses around the world or we can start one campus with you today where you are. So you become a lighthouse, a beacon of hope for people in your own locality. All you need to do is send a mail to me, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you today. Fasting your seatbelts as we get into the teaching of the word. One more advice. When you listen to me teach, get ready to unlearn so you can relearn. There's so much coming doctrinally that will equip you, that will shatter old mindsets and help you lay solid foundations for understanding of sound doctrinal teaching from the word of Almighty God. And if you have questions, be patient as we keep teaching. The teaching of God's word will keep explaining itself until all your questions are eventually dissolved. All right, let's get in the word today. I'm excited, friends. As we dive into revelation knowledge, I decree and I declare that you are strengthened with might by the Spirit. The eyes of your understanding flooded with light today. And as you learn, you learn and become efficient to teach others. In Jesus' name, happy viewing. Glory! 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 The entire world will be swallowed by the message of Christ. In our lifetime, fraudsters will be afraid of the pulpit. In our lifetime, legalism will be afraid of the pulpit. In our lifetime, if you don't preach Christ, nobody will hear your voice. In our lifetime, nobody will abuse the Bible. In our lifetime, Matoka Labatanaga. From nation to nation, from coast to coast, from continent to continent, from the mountain to the valley. Nations will bow to this message. They will bow to this message. They will bow to this message. Atlanta, get ready. United States of America, get ready. This is forever. 
It's happening here live. Abel Damina Ministries, also known as Power City International, United States of America presents Homecoming Conference 2019. Theme, The Revelation of Jesus. Ministry, Dr. Abel Damina. Date, 22nd to 24th November 2019. Time, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 22nd and 23rd November. 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 24th November 2019. Venue 2000 Convention Center, Concourse College Pack, GA 30337, Atlanta, United States of America. For inquiries and free registration, please call the following coordinators. Atlanta Coordinator, 770568514 or 2312539758. New York Coordinator, plus 1646241 Maryland Coordinator 404 542 6086. Until Christ is revealed, the believer will never be known. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminar. Be there. Now, it's important to realize that Luke 24 25, and then said he unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets? So we took time to say Moses is a standalone. He is the only individual that was, you know, specified. The rest were lumped together. Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So it appears that in many renderings and in many commentaries, Moses was separated from the prophets. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in this last day spoken unto us by his son. And I told you it's supposed to be in his son, all right? Because Jesus is not a messenger. Jesus is the message. So he has not spoken to us by, he has spoken to us in his son. Now, pay attention. That when he says the prophets spoke to the fathers, does Moses qualify as one of these prophets? The prophets spoke to the fathers. Well, we won't be in a hurry to answer that question. We have to check carefully. Because in chapter 3 of Hebrews, he is referred to as a servant over his house. Moses, a servant over his house. No one else in the Old Testament has such classification. Nobody else. Only Moses as a servant over his house. So Moses has never been called a prophet at any time. Never. Except where he himself called himself a prophet. And we shall interpret that in the course of this teaching. So, was Moses a prophet? Well, the narration of Hebrews chapter 3 doesn't seem so. Let's look at Peter's commentary concerning the prophets. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that shall come unto you. Such in what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you which the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. So Peter does a commentary on the Old Testament prophets, the prophets. Question, who is a prophet? The Greek word for the word prophet is the word prophetes, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-E-S, prophetes, same word as seer. A prophet in the Old Testament was a seer, somebody who sees things ahead of time or somebody who speaks things ahead of time. So what qualifies you to be an Old Testament prophet of repute? is to see Christ ahead of time or to speak of Christ ahead of time. An Old Testament prophet of repute was a seer who saw concerning Christ ahead of time and spoke concerning Christ ahead of time. Notice this, in Luke 24, what Jesus was doing there 
it's critical because for the first time that is the time you will see that word in new testament greek expounded expounded you will never find it anywhere before luke 24 expounded luke 24 27 and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded that's the first time that word appears in the new testament greek now the word expounded is a greek word hermonia hermonia h-e-r-m-e-n-e-i-a hermonia and that's where we get the cause hermeneutics now the cause hermeneutics has to do with explain or used to explain signs and symbols meaning there's a language used by a group that needs interpretation that means the old testament language is a language that belongs to a group that requires interpretation for example maybe you used to belong to a group of friends and for the purpose of conversation and communication you guys arrive at certain codes that you use in communicating whenever there's the people around and you don't want them to know what you're talking about and then when you guys meet you start using your codes something like when you say um, when you say something like 455 what you're simply saying is let us go 455 so you guys are talking and the guy says 455 and everybody's looking and then after a few minutes he says well i'll catch you guys later and everybody else says we'll catch you guys later and all of them are gone they used a language a symbol to communicate that is only particular to the group which means if you're not a member of that sect or group you will require interpretation same thing with the old testament the language of communication in the old testament was a language that requires interpretation and that is why if you do not have access to interpreting the old testament language you can get confused and you can get trapped in trans cross testamental application and that is what we're going to be doing in this course that's why i need your minds to be actively awake because we're going to be cracking certain codes and bringing into light something so that your relationship with god can get better get stronger you can understand god more and your work with god will get more confidence because the more knowledge the more confidence brother paul says we're always confident knowing this so what we know is what gives us confidence all right so is the word harmonia it means to explain signs and symbols so if jesus has to explain moses that means moses is not clear in his reading beginning of moses and the prophets he interpreted the symbols and signs or he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the word expound is the word harmonia it means to explain symbols and codes so it means if jesus is explaining moses or interpreting moses it means the language that moses used in communicating was not surface language it was not clear language meaning you can't just read the writings of moses and take them hook line and sinker you can't for example i walk into this place and we're a group and then when i want to say let us go i say four five five you heard four five five and you know what four five five is in mathematics but what 455 is to you is not what 455 means to me. So when you read Moses, you see English words. You think it's English, but it's not English as English. It requires interpretation. He expounded, meaning Moses was not clear. And also it implies that the prophets were not clear. Because he expounded Moses and the prophets that means there are things the prophet said that we have to interpret and i will try to interpret a few this is the problem many religious christians have when we begin to teach instead of them to humble themselves and let us teach them they start arguing without having a basis for their argument other than english language if it was clear english there'd be no need for a teacher when novels are written and sold in bookshops, you buy them and read. Nobody interprets them to you because the language that is used in writing novels is clear language. So that as you're reading, you're understanding. You don't need explanation of a novel. That's why they are sold in the market. You buy and read. And whatever you find, that's what is there. But any book that will require teaching, 
means it's not as direct as it is. That when Jesus rose from the dead, he had to set apart an office called apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring teachers for the purpose of equipping. That means you need a specialist to equip you in this subject. It's not as straight as it is. If it was as straight as this, all of you have Bibles. Some of you even have more Bibles than me, maybe. You just read it at home. But it's not as clear as you see it. It will require interpretation. Yeah. He expounded unto them. So if you have to explain Moses, it means Moses was not clear in the surface. The second word to explain is the spirit of Christ when we read First Peter. First Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Of his salvation, the prophets have inquired and such diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them. That's another word I have to explain. We've explained, expounded in Luke. Now we explain the spirit of Christ in First Peter. Now, spirit of Christ in the Old Testament. The word spirit of Christ was not mentioned in the Old Testament, not even once. You will never see the word spirit of Christ ever in the Old Testament. So if it was mentioned, Jesus will not need to explain Christ to them. If the word spirit of Christ was communicated literally in the Old Testament, then Jesus will not need to explain Christ. Beginning from Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them, in the scriptures, the things concerning himself, concerning the Christ. Ought not Christ, he was interpreting. So there was no spirit of Christ in them. Meaning, we need to explain what Peter was communicating here. Christ was hidden in the Old Testament, in the verbiage. He was hidden. Hence, the explanation Jesus did. If there was Christ in the, in the letters of the Old Testament, then there will be no need for the New Testament. The spirit of Christ has to be a New Testament truth. The spirit of Christ has to be a New Testament possession. So it means that there's a problem with the construction of that verse and we shall reconstruct it. And sometimes when there's a seeming contradiction in a verse, what I simply do is I just study the language. Once I study the language, I find it was not a contradiction. It was just construction sometimes. So since Christ, therefore, is the explanation, he is not the speaker. So it cannot be the spirit of Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians 2.16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. The word mind is the word knows. N-O-U-S. Knows means reasoning. We have the mind of Christ. Or we have the reasoning of Christ. That's the same word knows used in Romans 12. Through, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind, of your knows. The word renewing of your mind there is a mode of thinking. A mode of thinking. We have the mode of thinking of Christ. Is used for a set of facts. A set of facts. Or a set of thoughts. Or a set of information. Meaning that when it comes to the Old Testament, we have the explanation of Christ. So the epistles will be the explanation of Christ. The epistles will be the explanation of Christ. Now look at Luke 24, 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He opened their understanding that they might understand or they may have a mode of thinking of Christ. He opened their understanding so that their minds can think in line with the thoughts of Christ so that their minds could have a set of the thoughts of Christ. Not just a singular thought, but a body of truth. A set of thoughts, a set of information, a set of facts of Christ. 
when he opened their understanding. He opened their understanding that they might have a set of information of Christ. That they might understand the scriptures. But don't forget, the scriptures testify of Christ. Same word used in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. My reasoning is unfruitful. But I pray with my understanding. A set of thoughts of Christ. Or I will pray in the light of the understanding of Christ. I'm not going to pray and ask every evil spirit that is siphoning my blessings to catch fire. That is not praying with the understanding of Christ. That is praying religiously or praying fetishly or praying native doctorally or praying in stark spiritual illiteracy. When I pray, I will pray with a set or a mindset of Christ. Derived from the scriptures. I'm not going to pray based on the way I feel. I'm going to pray within the confines of a set of facts, thoughts, information of Christ well, the more you grow in this understanding you'll begin to see what wickedness religion has done to people truly so what is that thinking faculty that thinking faculty that we call a set of facts a mode of thinking that thinking faculty is Christ's thoughts we are a Christ thoughts in the epistles. Christ thoughts are in the epistles. That's why we say that the epistles are the climax of revelation. Now please, if you're new in church or you're new on TV or you're new on Facebook, follow carefully and patiently. Especially those of us that are used to prophetic churches. You know what I mean by prophetic churches? From the time the pastor starts preaching, you keep shouting amen till he finishes. It shall be well with you. Amen. This coming month of April, even if everybody's dying, you will not die. Amen. On your way out, every enemy, every enemy of your soul that is planning to bury you before July, what are you waiting for? Fire, fire, fire. So you're full of that kind of thing. You have been trained like that. You won't find it here. So just be patient. It may look boring, but the more boring, the better. Because by the time you finish going, attending a boring class, you graduate yes, as an architect. Mm. You graduate as a medical doctor. Yes, it wasn't exciting, it was boring, but you graduated. Yes, That's what's important. So, be patient with me. God punish the devil. Are you still here? All right. So, we have the thoughts. Of Christ and those thoughts are in the epistles because the epistles explains the Old Testament and the epistles of course you know will be Romans to Revelation so the Old Testament cannot have the Spirit of Christ why the Spirit of Christ does not utter things in symbols or in parables hence Jesus expounded to them in all the scriptures since it was full of symbols and parables meaning that the spirit of Christ was in there because the spirit of Christ does not speak in symbols and parables the spirit of Christ speaks expressly the spirit of Christ speaks with clarity no ambiguity expressly that's why Jesus himself is the express revelation of God Alright? So the spirit of Christ wasn't in them. Also, take note, 
The challenge we have therefore will be with the way words are used. Because in the Old Testament, the Spirit was given to them in a promissory note. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 20, 27. I'll put my spirit in you. That was a promise. That was a promise. It was not a present reality. That's why it has the word, I will put my spirit in you. John 4, 14. Spirit in you. In you is New Testament. John 14, 16 to 17. In you. The spirit of truth will be in you. That is New Testament. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. Promise three note. Concerning the New Testament. John 4, 14. Spirit in you. New Testament. John 14, 16, 17. Spirit in you. New Testament truth. If they had the spirit of Christ in them in the Old Testament, it means that they were born again. And therefore, it means that there will be no need for Jesus to die and rise. But we know that they were not born again, so they didn't have the spirit of Christ. So, let's reconstruct that sentence that says the spirit of Christ. And in reconstructing that sentence, there are two words that stands out. Number one, testify beforehand. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that you follow. That word testify beforehand is a Greek word, promotorumai. And I can spell P R O M A R T U R O M A I. It means to testify, it's used for a witness, not the actor. It's never used for the person speaking. That word is never used in the Greek, never used for the person speaking. I cannot testify of me. Someone else will have to testify of me. So if the spirit of Christ has to testify of Christ, it means the spirit of Christ is a third party. That would be wrong. The spirit of Christ is not a third party. The spirit of Christ is the actor. So if anybody is testifying, it wouldn't be the spirit of Christ. So that statement can be referring to Christ because he is the character. He is not the witness. The word signifies the Greek word delu, D-E-L-O-O, -O, used for a third party. Something you tell somebody else, which means to reveal or to inform a third party. D-E-L-O-O. -O signify paul used it in first corinthians 1 11 and first corinthians 3 13. so how do we put it together for it to make sense first peter 1 11. searching what or what manner of time the spirit of christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of christ and the glory that shall follow this is how it should read the spirit testifying of christ the spirit testifying of christ not the spirit of christ but the spirit testifying of christ because christ is a promissory note christ is not the speaker as a promissory note watch hence in the four gospels therefore we read that jesus was explaining moses So like we said, if Moses was clear, then Jesus wouldn't need to interpret Moses to them. Meaning that the language of Moses and the mode of communication will require interpretation. The language Moses used and the mode in which he communicated will require interpretation. So look at Joel 2.28. Let me show you just a little example. Joel 2.28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. This is the prophets that Jesus had to explain. Beginning from Moses and all the prophets. Joel was one of the prophets. Now the way Joel puts that scripture there. If you are not careful, you will think Joel was saying afterwards is the first word the second one is i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh so that's where people get the idea that the holy ghost is coming from heaven open the floodgates of heaven let it rain which rain 
Dun, 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 dun. Open the flood. So everybody is looking for rain to come from heaven because of the impression they got from the prophecy of Joel, which requires New Testament interpretation. So you can't follow the prophets who climb and sinker. And you can't follow Moses who climb and sinker. That's why Jesus expounded or rather interpreted. And the application of these interpretations will be seen in the epistles. Now, that Joel 2.27 will now be repeated by brother Peter in Acts 2.17. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Peter gives clarity, interprets afterwards. Afterwards is last days. Saith God, I will pour out of my spirit. He didn't say I will pour out my spirit. He says, my spirit will be in you. So now, the outpouring will be from the spirit in you. It's not going to fall from heaven. When the spirit came on your inside, the spirit came with everything you will ever need. From the day you got born again, you don't need anything again from heaven. Born again is a complete package. All things that pertain to life and godliness is on your inside. That's why when you speak in tongues, you are pulling out of the deposit. Kebayana. Libo da gege. Why are you looking at me as if you are meditating? There's time for meditation and there's time for talking. Out of your belly shall what? Flow what? So where are the rivers? Inside you. Help is not coming from above. Help is coming from within. Beletta, beletta. Am I communicating to New Testament believers? So stop praying for anointing for fall on me. It's not bricks. The anointing you have received, received of him abideth in you. It's already in you. You don't need to attend anointing service. Anointing is not a service. Anointing is a person. His name is Holy Ghost. When he came inside you, you are anointed. You don't need a service where Goya oil with manufacturer's date and expiry date will be applied over your head. If you have that kind of virgin Goya oil, use it for your salad. It will be of more profit. The anointing you have received thee of him abided in you. Is in you. So I will pour out of my spirit. And that's why every time you speak in tongues, you are refreshed. Because when you speak in tongues, you pull out of your spirit a refreshing for your soul. That's why when you start speaking in tongues, you get charged. Even if you are feeling depressed and sad because of circumstances, the moment you can put yourself together and begin to ilamanaka, menunga kulataka, rekuska berekete, meroko tokarata, after a while the thing will change here. Ilamano kitala, after a while it will change. Ayana nana, lemana nono, higa boyata, your eyes are charged. Why? Something is coming out of your spirit that you need to refire you for the days ahead but ye beloved building up your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost rising up higher and higher like an edifice for he that speaketh in tongues speaketh not unto men but unto god no man understandeth him he has cut off people and devils and demons he is in deep intimacy with god meluta boroto Nengoro kuskete, berita, 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 elebato bereke tonaka. I prophesy over you, the devil will never be able to handle you. Somebody say, I have all things that pertain to life 
and godliness right now. Can I hear your amen? Please say that. I will pour out of my spirit. Jesus was explaining Joel to Peter and the guys. Because Joel was speaking partial truth. Partial revelation. The Old Testament. Progressive revelation of partial truth. He says he will pour out. And Peter says in the last days he will pour out of. Referring to utterances and demonstration of the spirit. Not receiving the spirit. The day you got born again you receive the spirit. You don't receive the spirit twice. You receive the spirit once. When did you receive the spirit? When you got born again. It is called born of the spirit. So after a man is born again, you don't call him to come and receive the spirit. Uh -uh. After a man is born again, you show him what he has. And then based on the knowledge of what you has, you ask him to respond to utterance. And once he responds to utterance, which is already inside him, the outcome of response to utterance is rakuta barakata. Because rakuta barakata is pulled out of utterance. The utterance is given by the spirit and I speak. The spirit doesn't speak. I do the speaking. But the spirit gives utterance. And listen, if you are born of God, you will know the spirit because it is the spirit that gave back to you. So as a believer, you have a witness. You have the witness of the spirit. So once the spirit gives utterance, you will know it inside. You will know it. You will hear the thing coming like syllables inside. You will sense an enablement. You will sense a desire to say something. You didn't hear what I said. You will sense a desire to say something. The moment you open your mouth, you are yielding. The moment you yield, you will hear things coming out. That is not your language and it's not English. It's so easy to speak in tongues, except you are not taught. You don't need a special service. You don't need to tarry in Jerusalem. You don't need upper room encounter. No, it's already in you if you're born of God. It's just for you to know what you carry and give it expression. Zegalabaha. Some say, what about if it is demons talking through me? Are you born of demons? You're not born of demons. It's like me, I'm saying, what about if it's a cow talking through me? Me and cow, do we have connection? How can cow talk through me? Even if I do meh, I'm not a goat. I'm just mimicking. I'm mentally agitated. I'm acting beside myself. Because humans shouldn't have a goat sound. That's why we compare spiritual things with spiritual. Somebody shouted very loud at the top of your voices. I am born of the spirit. Say it again. I am born of the spirit. I have received the spirit. The spirit of God lives on my inside. I yield to that spirit. I didn't hear your amen. The same way Jesus explained Moses. He started explaining the prophet. John 1.17 for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Again, Moses came out differently. So, when he says the law, what do we mean? The law was given by Moses. So, when he says the law, what do we mean? Romans 4.13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. But through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. First of all, in that context, he started by saying, What shall we say that Abraham our father has found as pertaining to the flesh? That's how that discourse started in that chapter. So, what will that word? promise abraham justified by promise what will that word promise mean in hebrews 11 the word promise is repeated in fact sometimes it is used as promise and sometimes it is used as promises promise 
promises. So what do we mean by promise? Jesus in Acts 1.5 For John truly baptized with water but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Luke 24.49 And behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. When Peter spoke, he mentioned again in Acts 2.39, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Paul used the term promise. That term promise didn't come to Abraham by the law, but by promise. He's dealing with the law in contrast to the promise. Galatians 3 14 same word that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith or the promised spirit through faith now follow the narration for clarity that Galatians 3 15 brethren I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannul it or added thereto. Now, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non effect so what is simply saying is that the old testament is not in genesis number 2 that the promise is before the Old Testament. Number three, if the covenant is based on this promise, that means that the new covenant came before the old covenant. If the covenant came before the law, that means that the new covenant came before the old covenant. Why? Because if you call a type and a shadow, for there to be a type and a shadow, somewhere the original must exist. You can't have a type and a shadow in isolation. For there to be a type and a shadow, the promise must be existing. So, the New Testament was standing and the Old Testament foreshadowed the New Testament and the New Testament that was foreshadowed by the Old Testament in promise took effect thereafter in substance. So, for there to be an Old Testament, there was the promise before the Old Testament. That we may receive the promise of the spirit. So let's look at the word promise. The word promise appeared 52 times. It's a Greek word, epagelia. E-P-A-G-G-O-L-L-I-A. -L -L epagelia. It's two words actually. Agelo. Agelo, meaning to announce. Promise or to promise something. Epagelia. Something you said before you did it. Something you said before you did it. The promise. And epagelia is a self-commitment. Meaning, it's a commitment I made to you independent of your action or reaction. Epagelia. The promise. Self-fulfilling commitment that's why prophecies of the old testament were called promises because those prophecies were god's personal commitment 
to bring Christ to earth to die for man irrespective of man's action. That's why it's a promise. A pagelia. God made a promise on the basis of his integrity. Meaning he doesn't need you to pray. You don't pray for God's promise to come to pass. Kebayanaga. Because it is he who promised. Within the promise is the where we die. Inside the promise is the where we die. Or within the promise is his character. He's never disappointing, never failing, and his reliability expressed within the promise. So once the promise is given, it has what it takes within its constitution to come to pass. A pagelia. Self-confirming promise. Honey, that's why it says, when God made promise, seeing that he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Self-confirming promise. Hey, uh, Lebota. Self-confirming promise. How was Abraham made righteous? Talk to me, citizens. How? He did something? He did something? So, under the promise, you do nothing to be righteous. Under the promise... You do nothing to be righteous. Honey, when I give you a promise that I am committed to fulfill, you don't pray for me to fulfill it. See, I don't need your help to fulfill it. If I really meant what I said, because I will bring it to pass. But with all humanity, we fail in our promises. That's why this thing is not based on us. That's why this particular promise takes on with it the character of the promiser. So since God cannot fail, when God says, I will do, go and sleep. You didn't hear what I just said. If God said, I will do, what do you do? Don't even do thanksgiving. Don't even do thanksgiving. Don't even try to say you are encouraging God. Go and sleep. Get biscuit. Get coffee. If you like coffee. Cross your leg and wait for that promise manifested. Because as long as God lives. If he promised. is self-confirming. Say I hear, I hear. Uh -huh. That's why Abraham does not need to do anything when God promised. All Abraham needs to do is, I believe. That's all. That's all. It's not based on me. It's based on him. Self-confirming promise. <laughs> all right. So, a promise does not require performance. Nothing to be done. Just believe. So John 1 17. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace is the word charis in the Greek. Charis. C-H-A-R-I-S. Charis. To give freely without demand. What is given freely without condition? Charis. To give freely without condition. So grace means I will give you. It's not I will give you if. Grace means I will give you. It's not I will give you if. Irrespective of whether you believe or not. God gives. Listen. God is not going to give because you believe. Your believing is not needed. 
Honey, that's why it says, what if some don't believe? Will their unbelief make the word of God of none effect? Brother Paul said, God forbid. Whether you believe or not, God's promise is not dependent on your believing. So why do we believe? We believe so we enable ourselves to receive. So the believing is to help us receive what grace has provided. But as far as grace is concerned, it provides without condition. So that's why when a man of God say, bring a seed to tap into grace is a thief. Grace is what is given without condition. So for anybody to ask you, that in order for you to tap into grace. Now, he has to explain which of the grace. Grace from his village or grace from Christ. If it is grace from Christ, it is unconditional. You don't give anything to receive. You just believe and receive. Tap. Is it palm wine? Your receiving is what we call faith. And it does not in any way influence the giver. Your receiving is what we call faith. And it does not in any way influence the giver. The Lord came by Moses. You know why? Because with Moses, it requires performance. With Moses, it requires performance. But grace came by Jesus. With Jesus, is a promise based on his integrity. I will die for your sins, whether you believe it or not. I will pay for your unrighteousness. Whether you will accept it or not. I will offer myself as a substitute on your behalf. Whether you mock me or not. Whether you insult me or not. I know you don't even believe in me. But in spite of your unbelief, I have offered myself as a scapegoat. But God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. It's a promise made to us irrespective of our actions or reaction. Saved by grace. Saved by grace. That which does not have any condition attached. Yes, sir. That's the love of God in action. Grace is a summary of God's love in action. Yes. The love of God is a concept of grace. Grace is God's love in action. Another word for grace is love. That which is given without condition. I just love you. And I bless you. In fact, while I'm blessing you, you are insulting me. I am not changing my mind. Keep the blessing. That's God. That's God. For God so see the emotions so love the world. Greater love has no man than this. Nobody can love you like that. Nobody. That you are insulting him and is buying a car for you. You are abusing him and he is taking care of all your issues. Nobody can love you like that. Only Jesus can love you like that. And I have news for you. He has loved you already. With an ever. Stand on your feet. Let's close your service. Turn to your neighbor. Say neighbor. Did you hear? 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 Stop performing. You're not under Moses. You're under Christ. Yes. Under Moses we have to perform. Under Christ we have no performance. We have no performance. Under Christ, we are ourselves. 
we are what we are by the grace of God. Under Christ, we don't have to prove a point. Christ proved the point. Zimanku tamange. Anybody hearing the sound of my voice, shout yes. As many as received him, to them he gave. He gave what? No condition. Blessed, no condition. Kept, no condition. Healed, no condition. Heaven guaranteed, no condition. Sins forgiven. He didn't say, I will forgive you if you promise you will not do it again. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No condition. Whether you will do it again or not, you are forgiven. Then when you understand what it means to be forgiven, you are empowered not to do it again. Because to him that is forgiving much, love it much. When you understand the forgiving nature of God and the loving nature of God, automatically it changes you. Love changes a man. It's his goodness that leads us to repentance. That is when we begin to experience God's goodness, it makes us change our minds. If the love of God has not changed your mind, you have not understood it. You need to come to church more. Because when you understand it, it changes you. It changes you. Thank you, Lord. Lift your right hand and shout, I'm a product of grace. The love of God has been shed abroad. My heart by the holy ghost i am born of love i love naturally i do not struggle to love the love of god is my nature the way god loves is the way i love the love of god is not an emotion the love of god is sacrifice he loved me he gave me his holy i love him i give him my best i love the brethren i give my best to the brethren therefore I walk in love. I live in love. I operate in love. That is the proof that I am born of God. I didn't hear your amen. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice this morning all over the world in this building. Matole kebara kitana kolede bereke tona kaledebe. Jika mangre negi mazuta la namanga. I decree that you grow in grace. You grow in knowledge. Grow in grace. Grow in knowledge. Grow in grace. Growing knowledge, the revelation of Jesus grows big on your inside until nothing else matters. In the name of Jesus, barriers are broken, veils are broken, obstacles are broken, limitations are broken. Receive revelation knowledge in the name of Jesus. You're blessed beyond the cost, blessed beyond the cost, blessed beyond the cost, blessed beyond the cost, blessed beyond the cost. Somebody shouted three times, I am too blessed, I can never be caused. Two. Last time. Well, if you believe you are the blessed one, then celebrate the blessing. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Jesus Kabayana is the Father unveiled. Jesus is the intent. The plan, the motive, the agenda, the program, the purpose, the design, the desire, the architecture of God made manifest to man. When you see Jesus, there is no more agenda of God that is hiding anywhere. Atlanta, get ready. United States of America. Get ready. This is forever. It's happening here live. Abel Damina Ministries, also known as Power City International, United States of America presents Homecoming Conference 2019. Theme, The Revelation of Jesus. Ministering, Dr. Abel Damina. Date, 
22nd to 24th November 2019. Time, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 22nd and 23rd November. 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 24th November 2019. Venue 2000 Convention Center, Concourse College Pack, GA 30337, Atlanta, United States of America. For inquiries and free registration, please call the following coordinators. Atlanta Coordinator, 770568547 or 2312539758. New York Coordinator, plus 16462418670. Maryland Coordinator 404-542-6086 Until Christ is revealed, the believer will never be known. Host, Doctors Abel and Rachel Daminar. Be there. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word today. What a word. Please don't go away. This is important. I want to encourage every one of you, friends and family right here on Facebook, YouTube, and all the platforms. Do me a favor. Intentionally, aggressively, get more people to listen to these teachings. It's so important. Whatever you're going to do, if you want to take it out, put it on WhatsApp groups. You want to take it out, drop it in different platforms. We are committed to flooding the bloomable planet with the message of Christ in our lifetime. Fraud stars will be afraid of the pulpit. In our lifetime, nobody will disrespect the Bible. In our lifetime, the message of Christ will sound loud and clear from the mountain to the valley, from the back to the front. Everywhere will be flooded with the fragrance of Jesus. Jesus did not die in vain. He died for the whole world. Therefore, it's our responsibility to get the whole world to hear the message of faith and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So do me a favor, invite some people intentionally, bring more people on the platform and be ready to help them understand what we're teaching because we're committed to the finished work of Jesus Christ. The last thing to do today, if you're watching the broadcast, you do not belong to any local assembly, you're just alone and you want to belong to a group of brethren, which is obedience to scripture. God doesn't want you to be isolated. God wants you to be in a family of believers. The Bible says, I will bring my sheep to their fold and I will give them a shepherd after my heart. The Bible says, God brings the solitary into families. God wants you to belong to a local assembly. If there's none around where you are, where the message of Christ is preached, where sound doctrine is taught, you can begin one today for others in your area. All you need to do is send us a mail, Damina at yahoo.com. We'll work together with you and see how we can bring the light of God to your part of the world. That's what we're all about. Flooding the bloomable planet with the savor of the grace of God. I love you guys. I'm excited every time I have the opportunity to build you up with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to bring more people on the platform and enjoy what Christ has done. Amen. Oh.